Hi, my name is Barbara Allen. I am author of the book Conquering Arthritis. It's been the number one best-selling arthritis book on Amazon.com for the last nine years. Today I want to talk about making pancakes out of Urad doll flour. And I want to do this because many people with arthritis have problem foods that include gluten. So not everyone with arthritis has a gluten problem, but many people do. And when they do, they often miss ready sort of things. And so I'm trying to put out as many different recipes using as many different alternative flours as possible. I'm trying to keep them very simple because one of the keys when you have rheumatoid arthritis or another autoimmune condition is identifying all your trigger foods and then avoiding them for a period of time usually somewhere between six months and a year, sometimes as much as six months to two years. And in that time, that allows your immune system to heal and um, your gut to heal so that you no longer have this inflammatory reaction to the foods. So today I'm starting with Urad doll flour. I bought this at an Indian grocery store. It's a type of lentil and it's ground into a very fine powder. So one cup of Urad doll flour. You can tell from the way it's kind of going into the air, it's ground very fine. And I'm just going to use a little bit of sea salt. I'm using sea salt instead of table salt because it's not allergenic. Um, table salt for people with corn sensitivity, that can often trigger them. So it's a good idea if you have arthritis or an autoimmune condition just to start using sea salt so you're not getting corn every day. Even if you don't have a corn sensitivity now, you may if you get exposure every day. Because the bean flour has its own strong taste, traditionally in Indian cooking, many different spices are added to when, when your ad doll is used to make confections. Sometimes they're used to make donuts or pancakes like we're doing today. So if ginger is not one of your problem foods, ginger is a nice thing to add, like maybe about a teaspoon. If cumin isn't a problem food for you, this is something else you could add. Um, again, you won't want to add everything I'm showing you. Probably you would just pick one or two, but a tablespoon of cumin would be very good in this. Um, this is pepper powder, so if, if chili powder works for you and you like it, about a teaspoon of um, some sort of pepper powder could work. Turmeric um, is anti-inflammatory, so if you know that it's not a problem for you, then this is something else that could be very good to add, again about a tablespoon. Cardamom um, has its own very distinct flavor. I would use a, maybe a quarter teaspoon of this. It's a very strong flavor if you like it and you know that it's safe for you. Traditionally, something that's used um, with this type of flour is called asafoetida or hing. And the problem with using this is the asafoetida or the hing itself is a resin and when it's prepared so that you can use it in cooking when it's ground to keep it from sticking and not being able to be measured, it's usually cut with wheat flour. And that's the case in the brand I have. So if you have a gluten sensitivity, anything that has asafoetida or hang in it will likely set you off. So this is something you do not want to use. No asafoetida, no hang. If you go to an Indian restaurant, no asafoetida, no hang. The next spice you might consider using is fenugreek. I have ground fenugreek here, and it's also a very strongly flavored one. You might only want to use a quarter of a teaspoon. I've not ever tried cinnamon, so it might be good in this. Um, that would be about a teaspoon. And the final spice I've pulled out that might work really well in this is ground coriander. So that would be about a teaspoon. So just to remind you what's actually in the bowl right now, all I have is one cup of Urad doll flour and a little bit of sea salt to taste. I'm choosing not to put in any of the spices today 
because I'm assuming that people that have a lot of severe food sensitivities may be watching this, and so I want to demonstrate how to make this in the very simplest way possible. Personally, I've grown to like the taste of your ad doll flour and don't feel a need to have any other spices covering up its flavor. Um, if you have never had it before, I, as long as you don't strongly dislike it, I would suggest having it a time or two and see if it grows on you. So it's actually got a very nice flavor of its own. Although the people that find that it has a metallic taste, I've never found that, but the people that find it has a metallic taste do best if they use some other spice in there that is a strongly flavored spice and then suddenly they love it. So again, one cup of your Ed Dahl flour, sea salt, and now we just need to add enough water to make a thin batter. So I like to add it a little bit at a time. It makes it easier to get it to go into solution and not have any clumps. And bean flour will absorb a lot of water over time. And you need to let it, I'm, I like to make a very thin batter because then it will continue to absorb more and more water. And it tends to make a pancake or a confection that's very creamy, which is, can be very delightful, especially if, if you haven't had that texture for a while and because of needing to eat gluten-free, you don't have a lot of other choices for it. And what I like to do is actually leave it sit out several hours or even put it in the fridge overnight and that will get it to be the creamiest. So you definitely need to make a thin batter if you're going to let it sit overnight because it will absorb, continue to absorb water hour after hour. That's how you get the really creamy texture. And right now I can smell the distinctive smell of the, the Urad doll flower. Again, some people don't like it. At this point, I think it's fairly pleasant. I wasn't sure how much water I would need, so I started with a cup and a half of water. And so far, I've used three-fourths of a cup. I'm guessing that we'll use about a cup by the time we get this into a thin batter. It's still a little thick. You can see in the little clumps, there's a little bit of dried, dried flour still in there. So it's good to break up the clumps. This is actually looking pretty good. So this is thin enough now to let it sit. Hi, Barbara Allen back. We've let the Urad doll flour sit overnight in the refrigerator. And as I told you, the bean flowers absorb a lot of water. So it used to be very thin when we put it in. And this is actually a little thicker than I want for a pancake batter, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. But when it absorbs this much water, you know it's going to be really deliciously creamy and smooth. So I've added about a fourth of a cup water and that very thick batter now is a nice, nice smooth pancake batter consistency. So now let's move over to the pan and cook these. So you can use whatever oil you'd like. Um, I'm using olive oil. If you react to certain oils, just make sure that you don't use those. So I'm just going to use a little bit of oil in the pan so the pancakes don't stick. And now just ladle the batter into the pan. Again, because these are a little bit softer than pancakes that are made with a gluten flour like wheat, it's good to make sure that they've really cooked well on the bottom before you flip them. So what you'll notice first is little bubbles starting to come up around the edges. And it's good then to wait until Well, this one that I put in first is starting to bubble a little bit in the center. These that I put in last are 
bubbling on the edges, but when they stop bubbling in the center, it's usually a good time to flip them. One thing that's nice after this is set overnight is the Urad doll smell isn't as strong and neither is the taste. So since it does have such a distinctive taste, um, it's fine if you love that taste, but it's, it's actually nice if you're looking for something bready just and, and relatively bland to let it sit overnight instead of using it right away because then it's milder. Oh my goodness, these are good. I was playing around with um, making a donut shape with the last little bit of batter I had because the recipe on the flour um, that I bought talked about making donuts. And really, this texture is probably the closest of any non-gluten grain I've tried that, that would be a donut flavor. And what I'm noticing, especially since we let this sit overnight, is it's very mild. It would make a very good um, replacement for something like pita bread. It would be really good with something like hummus. They're so good, I don't even feel like they need any sweetener. I just want to eat them like I'd eat a regular pancake. Um, there is a very mild, distinctive flavor that it has, but because it's um, sat, sat overnight, it's, it's very mild. Um, I know some people don't like that flavor, and you can easily cover it up with the spices that I showed you earlier in the video, but for me, for me, there's absolutely no reason to. Um, just a little bit sweet. Um, I remember my grandmother telling me a story about how during the war she lived in Germany and her in a little tiny village, and um, she was a girl, and her uncle was the town baker, and they had run out of flour rations that month. And he managed to still make her a uh, pastry, uh, it was something like an eclair that he made for her using this, um, you know, she, she told me they were horse beans, but she said they were dark on the outside and then when you ground them they made white flour. And I know the kind of beans that they use to make this are um, black on the outside and white on the inside, so it may have been something very similar, but I can imagine like if somebody was a creative cook, they could make a pretty amazing eclair with this flour. I'm not, I don't specialize in desserts, but um, if anybody makes that, please post a YouTube video or response and, and let me know what you did and how it turned out. Um, but even just very plain for something quick, um, if you make up the batter the day before, you can just have these amazing pancakes and um, with a totally different flour, and that can be your bready thing for the day.